Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Like uh, Panini, Pingala is another great name in ancient India. Pingala is the person who systematized the Chanda Shastra, the other Vedanga. He wrote the Chanda Shastra, the Chanda Sutras, which give the theory of prosody both of Vedic meters as also of the classical Sanskrit meters. We again do not know, like in the case of Panini, the exact date of Pingala. Generally, scholars place him around 300 before BCE. So, in this talk, I will give a brief overview of the development of Chanda Shastra. Then, we will go into the nitty gritty of what is meant by Guru and Laghu syllables. How do we scan a syllabic meter or a Varnavritta in terms of the eight Ganas? And then we go into the combinatoric ideas that were developed by Pingala in the last chapter of Chanda Sutras. These are known as the Pratyayas. So, Pingala discusses six Pratyayas, which are combinatorial techniques or combinatorial tools uh, for studying the Sanskrit meters. Prastara, Sankhya, Nashta and Uddhishta, Lagakriya and these are the basic uh, Adva Yoga is another one. These are the six Pratyayas of Pingala. We will discuss them. Chanda Shastra again has a continuous history. Uh, Pingala's is the classic work. Bharata's Natya Shastra has a chapter on Chandas. Then mathematical works like Brahma Gupta's Brahma Sputta Siddhanta has a Chandas Chiti Adhyaya. The what are called the Matra Vrittas were introduced uh, and discussed more in greater detail in the Prakrit work called Vritta Jati Samuchaya by Virahanka. Halayudha wrote a very interesting commentary on uh, Pingala's Chanda Shastra. The text that is most commonly studied uh, by students of Sanskrit is a book written around 1000 AD uh, by Kedara Bhatta. It is called Vritta Ratnakara. Hema Chandra wrote again on Prakrit meters also. Prakrita Pingala is another text. The mathematics books like uh, Mahavira's Ganita Sara Sangraha and later Ganita Kaumudya of Narayan Pandita also discuss uh, problems related to the combinatorial problems related to Sanskrit meters. Then we have Damodara's Vani Bhushana and a very interesting commentary on Vritta Ratnakara by Narayana Bhatta. So, we will straight away go into what is the way in which Sanskrit meters are understood. The basic building blocks of studying Sanskrit meters are the characterization of syllables by Laghu and Guru. So, what is a syllable? So, you take anything. So, Srishti that is there. This consists of two syllables. Sri is one syllable. Shtihi is another syllable. So, a syllable is either a vowel by itself or a vowel preceded by a group of consonants. Now, these uh, syllables are of two types, Laghu the short syllable, Guru the long syllable. A consonant with a short vowel is a Laghu, unless it is followed by a Visarga or by an Anuswara or by a conjunct consonant. A consonant with long vowel is always a guru. In the end of each foot of a meter, the last syllable can be optionally taken to be guru. So, this is the definition. Obviously, it will not be clear if we merely state it. So, let us take some a very interesting words, the invocatory words of Kalidasa's Abhigyana Shakuttalam, Yasrishtihi, Srashturadhyaya. Vahati vidhi hutam ya havir ya cha ho tri. So, this is one foot of this meter, it has 21 syllables. 
Now, let us understand what are the laghus and gurus in this. So, first ya srishtihi. So, first one is ya. So, obviously, it is a dirga, a consonant with a dirga that should be a guru. Second, sri. Now, look at itself, it should be a lagu, but it is followed by a conjunct consonant shta. So, srishtihi. So, followed by shti, therefore, sri becomes a guru. Shti, shti again by itself should be a lagu, it is a short vowel, but it is followed by visarga. So, it is shtihi. So, that is again a guru. Srashtu radhya. So, first, first sra, it is again followed by shtu, therefore, it is a guru. Shtu is the first lagu in this. So, ya srishti srashtu radhya. So, it is this two which is really looking very complicated, a conjunct consonant followed by a short vowel that is a lagu. Ya is guru, vahati, all these three are lagus, vahati. Vidhi hutam. So, till you come to tam, which is ta followed by an anuswara, therefore, it is a guru. Ya Havir Yacha Hotri. Ya is Guru, Ha is Lagu, V should be Lagu, but it is followed by Riya, therefore it is followed by conjunct consonant, that is a Guru. Ya is a Guru, Cha is a Lagu, Ho anyway is a Dirga, that is Guru, Three is the end of the Pada. Now, the important thing is, all the four Padas have the same Lagu Guru structure, that is the basic point of what is called a varna vritta or a syllabic meter. Ya srishti srashtu radhya, vahati vidhi hutam, ya havir ya chahotri, yedve kalam vidhatta, shruti vishaya guna, ya sthita vyapya vishwam, ya mahu sarva bija, prakriti riti yaya, pranina pranavantaha, pratyaksha bhi prasannas, tanu bhi ravatu vas, tabhi rashta bhi richaha. Now, the way to read it, actually we will see it in a minute. The points where you have to pass is also defined in the definition of a meter. This meter is actually something called this Raghdhara meter, one of the very beautiful meters in Sanskrit language. It is also used in several of our uh, South Indian languages in versification, other languages also. So, this Raghdhara, its definition itself is given in terms of some units called ganas. Instead of saying Sraghdhara is given by G G G G L G G L L L L L L L G G L G G L G G, the way to define the scan a meter in terms of what are called ganas. Ganas are units of three syllables each with a particular structure of Laghu Guru. So, Brabnair Yanam Trayena Trimuni Yati Yuta Sraghdhara Kirti Teyam. So, the second part is very simple. Trimuni Yati Yuta, Tri Muni, Muni stands for the number 7. So, there is a Yati, there is a pause after each unit of 7, after each unit of 7 syllables you should pause. So, Trimuni Yati Yuta, Sraghdhara Kirti Teyam, Sraghdhara is characterized by a pause after it is a, it's a meter of 21 syllables, there is a pause after every 7 syllable and it has Rabhnair Yanam Trayena, it has these ganas, Marabhana Ya Ya Ya. Now, what are these ganas? So, three syllables, each syllable can be Laghu or Guru, therefore, there will be eight possibilities. So, there are these eight ganas, and they have been given these names Ya, Ra, Ta, Bha, Ja, Sa, Ma, Na. And how to remember that? One way is to remember this verse. Adi Madhya Vasaneshu Yarata Yanti Laghavam Bhajasa Gauravam Yanti Manautu Guru Laghavam Adi beginning, Madhya middle, Avasana end. So, the Ganas Ya, Ra and Ta have a Laghu at the beginning, middle and end. So, a Gana with Laghu at the beginning which means other two are guru, a gana with lagu at the middle, a gana with lagu at the end. So, they are called ya, ra, ta, yarata, yanti, laghavam, adi, madhyava, saneshu. 
bhajas a gaurav abhyan so the ganas bha ja and sa will have a guru at the beginning middle and end manav tu guru laghavam the magana is all guru the nagana is all laghu so these are the eight ganas in terms of these eight ganas all classical meters are characterized and of course if it's not divisible by 3 you will say so many of these ganas and followed by a guru or a lagu or whatever and the beauty is this definition is also couched in the same sragdhara meter the meter which it is defined na brahmair yanam trayena trimuniyati yuta sragdhara kirti teyam so this definition of the meter sragdhara is also versified in the sragdhara meter it has ma ra bha ma is g g g ra is g l g bha is g l l na is l l l ya as you can see is l g g there is a triplet of l g g l g g l g g l g g ya naam trayena ma ra bha na ya naam trayena three yas so this is the characterization of sragdhara and so that is the ya srishti srashturadya bhati vidhyutam ya havit ya chahotri that is the way this ragdhara meter is constituted now there is another very nice mnemonic to remember the ganas this is a formula which is attributed to pani this is a formula which you will not find in any classical sanskrit work on prosody so for i think 4 5 years ago uh, i think donald nut i think the great computer uh, programming Uh, teacher, he wanted to know uh, where did this Yamata Raja Bhana Salagam is the mnemonic? Where did it originate? So various people searched. So there is a book on Telugu prosody by a man called Charles P. Brown, written in 1840s, where he has quoted this. But almost all students of Sanskrit know this is taught orally by everybody, and generally it is said that this goes back to Pani. <laughs> so what is this Yamata Raja Bhana Salagam? In this All the ganas are encoded linearly. Yamata is the characterization of yagana. Yamata is lagu guru guru. Matara is the characterization of the magana. It is guru guru guru. Taraja is the characterization of tagana. It is guru guru lagu. Rajabha is the characterization of ragana. It is guru lagu guru. Jabana is the characterization of jagana. That is lagu guru lagu. so yamata rajabhana salagam if you remember that you know what is yagana what is magana what is bhagana what is jagana and now if you write uh, replace guru by 0 lagu by 1 you have a, a binary sequence of 10 uh, entries if you remove the last two 10 which is the same as the beginning 10 you can put them on a circle you have a binary sequence of uh, length 8 now this binary sequence of length 8 is a special sequence this 1001 so each triplet here is a binary sequence of length 3 if you put this on a circle you will find that it generates all possible triplets binary triplets of length 3 there are eight of them and such a cycle in today it's called in communication theory as de bruin cycle so yamata rajabhana salagam is the oldest example of such a cycle so you can have such cycles for binary sequence of length 4 there are 16 of them again you can put them on a circle and uh, generate all possible binary sequences of length 4 by a code of length 16 like that in general but uh, as far as prosody is concerned the ganas are eight and we need to know yamata rajabhana salaga now we come to the pratyayas of pingala all these ganas are defined in pingala's chanda sutra also so in the eighth chapter the last chapter of chanda shastra again like pani is ashtadhyayi pingala's chanda shastra is also ashtadhyayi it has eight chapters he introduces the sixth pratyayas of chanda shastra 
the first one is called prastara now sragdhara had a particular structure in terms of guru and lagu it has 21 syllables so at each place you can have guru or lagu a particular choice has been made and you obtain the meter sragdhara but you want to know like a mathematician that pingala was so what are all the possible meters with the 21 syllables can we write them down can we understand something about them so these pratyayas are basically dealing with these questions are called questions of combinatorics and indians were one of the greatest specialists in combinatorics so whenever they had various things the first question is how to classify them how to put them in a sequence and how to understand them what follows what so this is what pingala does for all these mat meters so prastara is a rule by which you can write down all the possible meters of a particular length so if the length is only 3 there are only eight possibilities we saw the eight ganas so you have a an array of eight rows but if you have four syllables you have an array of 16 rows if you have five syllables you have an array of 32 rows and obviously when you reach ragdhara it will be a an array of very very large number 2 to the power 31 so prastara is a rule by which you can write down now once you have written it down then the question is the next mathematical question is supposing i tell you a certain row number can you tell me what is the metrical pattern that appears there and supposing i give you a metrical pattern can you tell me which row of the prastara it belongs so these two are mathematical questions one is called nashta another is called uddishta it is called nashta because if you have written down the prastara on the ground or wherever and then wind has blown and the prastara has gone away but then i want to know what is the 20th row in the prastara of five syllables prastara of five syllables has 32 rows so i want to know what is the 20th row so nashta is the problem without doing the prastara once again i should just go and write down what is the metrical form what is the lagu guru sequence uddishta is the converse problem given a lagu guru sequence where does it appear in the prastara then there is question of sankhya which already i have told you it is 2 to the power n each slot each syllable can be lagu or guru so if you have n syllables the number of possible meters is 2 to the power n that is the sankhya then laga kriya deals with how many meters are there of say seven syllables of which there are three gurus so how many three guru uh, meters are there in seven syllable prastara so obviously this will lead us to the binomial coefficients which we saw in the introductory lecture that is the laga kriya so now we will go into each of them and as you can see the crucial mathematics that will appear you have lagu and guru and binary sequences so the crucial mathematics that will appear now is binary mathematics and pingala was the great originator of all the binary mathematics and this was of course rediscovered in 1990s so first is prastara so how do i list all vrittas vritta is meter of a particular length so if you have only one syllable there are only two g and l if you have two syllables you have this gg lg gl and ll so pingala is giving a rule uh, in a very very codified form he is basically saying you form a pair g below l write that below each other and fill up the right with two g's and two l's so pingala's rule is take the prastara of the previous put it below itself and in the right fill it up with equal number of g's and l's so let us see how we get the prastara of three syllables from the prastara of two syllables this is the prastara of two syllables let us go so now this portion if you see this is the same as the prastara of two syllables here g g l g g l l l g g l g g l l l so this portion is prastara of two syllables this portion is prastara of two syllables in the right you write four g's and four l's you have obtained the prastara of three syllables so prastara should have 
each and every metrical form of that length should appear once and only once and it should be a rule by which you generate all of them. So, that is the rule of prastara. Today, the word prastara you hear mostly in music and in a later talk on combinatorics, I will tell you how the mathematical theory of prastara in music is discussed by uh, Sharangadeva. There is another rule for doing prastara. Uh, this is a different kind of a rule. Supposing you start with some row of the prastara in uh, of four syllables and you want to know the next row without having to start from the beginning and uh, doing all that. So, this rule is found in Vritta Ratnakara. So, going from one row to next row, the rule is the following. Start scanning from the left. Once you encounter a G, put a L below bring down whatever is to the right as it is. If there is something else to be written in the left, fill that up with the g's. So, let us do the next row. Start from the left, first time g is encountered, put a l there, bring down whatever else there is to the right as it is. In the left, fill it up with g's. Next row, start from the left, below the g put an l, bring down what is there to the right as it is. Next row, start from the left, identify the first g, put a l below that, bring down whatever is there to the right as it is, fill up the left, left with g's, like that you can go. This is transforming one binary sequence to another in such a way that you cover all of them. Actually, this some known as some, something known as the von Neumann transformation of all binary sequences from 0 to 1 today. Something like that is what is meant here. So, in this prastara you can see that or you can see it here. So, this is the four syllable prastara. Start with g g g g and then go down. There is one more way of doing this prastara. The, raw, the first row is the first column is g l g l g l g l second column is g g l l g g l l g g l l third column is g g g g l l l l g g g g l l l l fourth column is g g g g g g g g l l l l l l l l so that is what is called the uh, one professor singh calls it uh, the didir or the uh, the fastest uh, super fast algorithm of pingala to do the prastara so now we have understood prastara this is to list all possible metrical forms of a given length. Now, we can do a small thing and see straight away the relation of this with the binary numbers. Suppose, I put wherever g appears 0 and wherever l appears, I put 1. Let me take the sixth row here, the sixth row of the fourth four syllable prasthara. Suppose, I want to take the sixth row. So, the sixth row is L g L g. I put 1 where L appears and 0 where g appears. I take the mirror of this, mirror image of this and now you view it as an ordinary binary number today, you will get the same number. You take the mirror image of this and understand it as an ordinary binary number. So, as a binary number, this will be plus 1. As a binary number, this is 4 plus 0 plus 1. You have to add 1 to it because this prastara is starting with the first row, whether g, 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 g is the binary number 0. So, you should add 1 to it in the end. So, if we said g is equal to 0, l is equal to 1, it is good to remember this to understand whatever Pingala does, because we are familiar with binary numbers, we do not know Pingala, therefore, this is a good way of. And then we see that each metric pattern is the mirror reflection of the binary representation of the associated row number minus 1. So, this is the representation of number 5. Okay. Having understood Prastara, let us go to Sankhya. Today we know that this number is 2 to the power n. Now, Pingala does not say 
the number of meters of n syllables is 2 to the power n. He gives an algorithm for calculating it. And the algorithm being an ancient algorithm happens to be one of the most efficient algorithms for calculating the nth power of a number. So, the he is saying take this power. So, if you are looking for the prastara of n syllables, take the number n. Now, if start dividing it by 2, if the number can be halved, you just write 2 somewhere, just put a mark 2 somewhere. If the number cannot be halved, you deduct 1 and instead of putting 0 at that point, you put a, a symbol 0. So, this is where the symbol 0 appears in Pingala's. Dvirardhe, if it can be halved, put a 2. Rupe shunyam, if you have to remove number 1, shunyam, put mark 0 there. Then, after you have marked all these 2's and 0's, suppose you have something like this, start from the left, dvishunye, wherever 2 appears, wherever 0 appears, multiply it by 2. Tavadardhe tadgunitam, wherever 2 appears, you square the number. So, ultimately to calculate 2 to the power n, Pingala is giving you a sequence of operations which involve multiplying by 2 and squaring. Obviously, 2 to the power n is multiplying 2 by itself n times, but what Pingala is giving you an algorithm which involves much smaller number of steps. So, let us look at it with a simple example and is equal to 6. So, 6 is divisible by 2. So, you mark 2. 3 cannot be halved. So, subtract 1 by 3, mark 0. 2 can be halved, you mark 2. 1 you have reached, subtract 1 from it, mark 0. So, you have a sequence 2, 0, 2, 0. And now, from the right, wherever 2 appears, you multiply by 2. So, corresponding to this 0, you start with the number 1. 0 is there, multiply by 2. 2 appears, square the resulting thing. Again, 0 appears, multiply by 2. 2 appears, square the thing, you will get 2 to the power 3. In fact, you can justify this straight away by going back to the power. Wherever you can halve it, you can see, you can go back by squaring it. Wherever you can, it cannot be halved, you can see, it involves a single multiplication and that is how this algorithm is obtained. In fact, Pingala's algorithm became the standard way of calculating the nth power of a number. Normally, the nth power of a number appears in simple mathematics when we calculate the sum of a geometrical series. So, in any book like Ganita Sara Sangraha or Lilavati etcetera, the sum of a geometrical series is given in terms of this algorithm. And so, modern scholars when they started looking at it, they were totally dumbfounded. They did not know what was happening. Here is a geometric series and we know that it, you have to calculate the nth power of the uh, each factor that appears in each term of the geometrical sequence. And here we are asked to have something uh, <laughs> divided by 2, my, my <laughs> but it appeared that this actually is the much faster way. Supposing you have a geometric sequence, sum it up to 845 terms or something. Instead of 845 operations, you have something like log n. Instead of doing n operations, this after all using the binary sequence of the number n, this reduces it to something like log n. Of course, it is not the most optimal algorithm for taking a power. There are more powerful algorithms today, but they need much more complex devices. <laughs> so, Pingala then discusses uh, some few other relations, which are like the summing a geometric series and things like that. Uh, what are all the number of uh, meters up to n syllables? Then, what is the relation between the number of meters in n plus 1 syllables with number of n syllables. So, clearly he is very clearly aware that it is 2 to the power n, but he never tells you that S n is the number of meters of length n is 2 to the power n in the way we would do straight away. There is another thing Pingala also does. These meters that we have been discussing are what are called samavrittas. That is all the four, a meter is supposed to have four feet, four padas. So, the Kalidasa's verse that we saw had four padas. 
all the four padas, if they have the same structure of lagu guru, it is called a samavritta. If the first and third have the same structure, second and fourth have the same structure, it is called a ardha samavritta. And if it is not a samavritta or an ardha samavritta, it will be called a vishamavritta. And so, next mathematical problem is how many ardha samavrittas and vishamavrittas are there of a length n. So, Pingala deals with it in the fifth chapter of uh, his Chanda Sutra. He seems to be a very general mathematician as you can see. He is discussing all mathematical questions that arise. It is not that these ardha samavrittas were very common or vishamavrittas are very common. He is posing the problem and giving a solution also. Samam tavat kritvaha kritam ardha samam. So, we know the number of samavrittas of n length n is 2 to the power n. Now, ardha samavrittas obviously will have n, 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 n. The first two n's are all different. Therefore, it is 2 n syllables, but or it is 2 to the power n squared if you want to understand it, 2 to the power 2 n. But other samavrittas are those where the two feet of the meter are different from each other. So, you should subtract the samavrittas from that and therefore, you get the actual ardha samavrittas. The number is 2 to the power n squared minus 2 to the power n. If you reflect on it for a minute, you will see how this appears. So, ardha samavrittas are those where the first line of the meter and the third line of the meter have the same structure, second line and fourth line have the same structure. So, it is equivalent to having looking at all possible meters of length 2 n, but you have to subtract the possibilities where the first and second are the same and therefore, 2 to the power n squared minus 2 to the power n in the same argument will lead to the number of vishamavrittas of n syllables to be 2 n squared minus 2 n whole thing squared minus 2 n squared minus 2. So, all this is here in these three sutras of Chanda Shastra, samam tavat kritva kritam ardha samam vishamancha rashyunam. Rashyunam is for remove the kritva stands for squaring, rashyunam is remove the number which you are squaring from what you have obtained and that is Pingala Sutra. Now, we go to the Nashta and Uddishta and basically as you can see, since the prastara is essentially a table of converting this pattern into binary numbers, the Nashta and Uddishta essentially involve knowing a number, how to find its binary representation and given a binary representation, how to know the number, essentially it is the basic binary mathematics. So, Nashta, Pingala has two rules, Lardhe, Saike, Ga. So, again you want to find out the metric pattern in a particular row. So, say row k of a prastara of n syllables, you start with k, if it can be halved, mark a la, if it cannot be halved, add 1 to it, halve it and mark a ga and go on and fill up as many numbers as the, the uh, prastara is supposed to have and you will get the metrical pattern. So, we will quickly see the example. So, we had this uh, prastara of 4 syllables this is the prastara of 4 syllables, right? Meters which have 4 syllables, they are 16 in number. Question is being, so we are asking various questions with respect to this. What is the 7th uh, meter or what is the 8th meter or given any meter which row it appears. So, it is good to remember that prastara in the reference to it. Find the 7th metrical forum in the 4 syllable prastara. So, we go back to the rule that we stated just before, lardhe saike ga. So, 7 cannot be halved, add 1 divide it by 2, you get a guru, 4 can be halved, so you get a guru followed by a lagu now, 2 can be halved, you get guru, lagu, lagu. Now, you cannot stop here because you are looking for meters of 4 syllables, so do this operation once more, you will get a guru on the right. So, GLLG is the forum which is in the row 7 of that the prastara obviously you know that it will be there but just to demonstrate that the row 7 of that prastara is glg of course it looks simple for the case 4 but if you have a prastara of uh, like sragdhara or something it will be an interesting mathematical problem now we go to 
Uddishta. So, Uddishta is given a metrical pattern, what is the row in which it appears in the prastara. So, again Tingala has only two sutras for this, Pratiloma Ganam, Dvir Ladyam, Tatogyekam, Jakyat. Pratiloma Ganam, you start from the opposite direction, scan the metrical pattern from the right. So, you have G L L G here, start scanning it from the right end, start with number 1, whenever you find a lagu, multiply it by 2, whenever you find a guru, you multiply by 2 and remove 1, dvir ladyam tato gyekam jahyat, whenever you find a ga, you multiply by 2 and remove 1. So, this is the rule of Pingala, start from the right. So, G L L G we have, start with 1 that is just the starting number. So, whenever you begin and you go to a G, nothing will happen, 1 into 2 minus 1 is 1. So, you have to really come to the first lagu, that is why he is saying Pratilomaganam Dvir Ladyam, you can just go up to the first lagu that you will find here. So, first lagu is here. So, when we find the lagu, you multiply it by 2, 1 into 2 is 2. Then again you find another lagu, you multiply that by 2, you get 4. Finally, you have a guru. So, this 4 has to be multiplied by 2 and 1 subtracted, you again come back with 7. In fact, this we had seen just a minute ago that this was the 7th metrical pattern, I have just reversed the process. Now, there is a much simpler way, calculationally this is much simpler. What Pingala has given is the optimal algorithm, but for us people like us who would like to know it in relation to binary numbers. We, there is a much simpler way of doing the Uddhishta process. So, this is described in Vritta Ratnakara. Uddhishtam dvigunan adhyan adhyat uparyankan samalikhe lagustha yetu tatrankaha taihi saikaihi mishritair bhavet. So, do, to do the Uddhishta process, so let us take some odd thing G L L G L. So, this is a or even you can put one more. Or. So, this is a six syllable prastara you want to do. From the left, start with 1 and keep multiplying it by 2 at each stage. And add all the numbers above L and add 1 to it. So, add all these numbers. So, this is 2 plus 4 plus 16 plus 32 plus 1. So, that is the row in which this pattern will appear in the 6 syllable prastara. So, basically this is 2 to the power 1, 2 square, 2 cube, 2 to the power 4, 2 to the power 5. So, you have 1 into 2 to the power 1, uh, 1 plus uh, 1 into 2 square plus 1 into 2 to the power 4 plus 1 into 2 to the power 5 plus 1. And remember, if I had written this number in terms of, if I had written this number in binary code putting 0 for G and 1 for L, so this is how it will appear. And if I take the mirror image of this, if I do the mirror image of this, this is 110, 110. Now, you will see this rule straight away that each place value in binary will correspond to the power that we are multiplying. Wherever g appears, it is all 0, so you do not add. Only the l's have to be added with the appropriate binary place value and that is the rule. Pingala does not want to give this rule. His rule is much more simpler because you do not have to go on calculating all these powers of 2, which you do not need. So, whenever g appears, multiply by 2 and subtract 1. Whenever lagu up, uh, Lagu appears double and keep going, that is a much more optimal algorithm that he gives for the Uddhishta process. So, for G L L G again, I have written down the Uddhishta process. From the left, write 1, 2, 2 square, 2 cubed, wherever L appears, add those numbers and that will be the. So, both Nashta and Uddhishta processes of Pingala are essentially based on the fact that every number has a unique binary representation. That is, every number can be written uniquely as a sum of powers of 2 to the power 
here. <coughs> now, we come to the last pratyaya of pingala, which is called the laga kriya. So, given uh, 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 in the n syllable prastara, how many meters are there, which have five gurus or how many meters are there, which have seven lagus. So, that kind of a question. Pingala has given just one sutra for this, pare purnamiti. In fact, this is the last sutra of Pingala's Chanda Shastra. And what was the previous sutra? The previous sutra was pare purnam. And then that is followed with the sutra pare purnamiti. In fact, there is some convention also that you repeat a sutra when you reach the end of a text. So, many people said that this is nothing to do with laga kriya, it is just the statutory repetition of the seek of the sutra in the end. But uh, the commentators and the tradition does not think so. Uh, the commentator Halayuda is very clear that Pingala is explaining how to calculate, how to do the laga kriya process with this uh, sutra. So, he is saying, in fact, that previous pare purnam, I did not explain that sutra then for you. The Sutra 833 was Pare Purnam. There, what Pingala is saying is the following. In fact, that has to do with the previous Sutra. <laughs> Dvirdhyunam Tadantanam, which is the number of meters of all syllables up to number n is equal to twice the number of meters which have length n less by 1. Dvirdhyunam Tadantanam all meters of length 1, 2, 3, 4 up to n, the number of possibilities is twice the number of meters of length n minus 1. And then the next sutra pare purnam means s n plus 1, the number of meters of length n plus 1 is just twice the previous number without that reduction of 1. So, dvirdhyunam tadantanam, here you are subtracting 1, pare purnam the number of meters of length n plus 1 is just purnam, the whole of double of the number of meters of the previous length s n, s n plus 1 is 2 s n. These were the meanings of the previous two sutras of Pingala, but now then he comes with one more sutra here, pare purnamiti and Halayudha says that this will give us the laga kriya process. So, what is the laga kriya process? Halayudha explaining this, we will come to this quotation in a minute. Let us just see the way Halayudha is explaining. Halayudha says, you form this figure. How do you form this figure? First, you write a square with one entry. Below that, you write two squares. Below that, you write three squares. Below that, you write four squares. Like that, you go on. In the first square, you put one. In the next two squares, you put one. Then below that, in any square, you put the sum of the numbers which is above it. So, here you put only 1, in 2 you put both of them and here it is 1. So, pare koshte purnam, the total sum of the two cells that are above it is to be entered. So, that is the meaning of pare purnamiti. So, then in the next row 1, 3 is sum of 1 and 2, 3 is sum of 2 and 1, 1. 1 here, 4 is sum of 1 and 3, 6 is the sum of 3 and 3, 4 is the sum of 3 and 1, 1. And by now, all of you know what these are. These are nothing but the terms which will appear when we do a plus b to the power n or 1 plus 1 to the power n. These are the numbers which appear as the various terms. And so, each of them is a binomial coefficient. N C R stands for n factorial by r factorial n minus r factorial is a number of combination of r objects chosen from n objects. <coughs> and this rule that each number is the sum of the two numbers above is essentially a recurrence relation for this binomial coefficient. It is a well known recurrence relation for the binomial coefficient uh, that is the Pingala's recurrence relation which is coming in Pare Purnamiti. So, we can now read this Sanskrit just to feel happy that Halayudha is actually saying it. Uparishtat ekam chaturasra koshtam likhitva tasya adhastat ubhayato ardhanishkrantam koshtadvayam liket. 
So, having written one square above, below that half going each way outside, write two squares. That is, the both the squares should touch in the middle of the first square. So, that is how these people write. Tasya api adastat trayam, below that write three squares. Tasya api adastat chetushtayam, below that write four squares. Yavad abhimatam sthanam iti meru prastada, till the number of uh, syllables that you are considering. You are considering syllables uh, uh, prastara of seven syllables, you have to go to seventh row. This is called meru prastara. Tasya prathame koshte eka sankhyam yavasthapya. So, put number one in the first lakshana midam pravartayet. Put into effect the following recurrence relation. Tatra pare koshte yad vritta sankhya jatam tat purva koshta yoho purnam niveshyet. So, whatever number that has come uh, in the upper two cells, you put the sum of the whole of it in the next row. Tatra ubhayoho koshtakayoho ekaika mankam dadyat. So, then he explains what will be the first row, then what will be the second row, etcetera, etcetera. That is how Halayudha is explaining the Meru Prastara. Now, this is the way the binomial coefficients were also studied in modern times. And this figure has a very, very famous name in modern times. It is called the Pascal triangle, slightly rotated Pingalas Meru or Meru Prastara of Halayudha. You rotate it slightly is what is called the Pascal triangle. Pascal, the very famous mathematician wrote a tract on this and he discussed the properties of all the binomial coefficients coming out of it. Of course, the history of this goes back to Pingala, but uh, there are many, many other cultures. The Chinese and the Islamic mathematics also have this Pascal triangle much before Pascal uh, obtained it and it is an unfortunate thing that all our terminology refers to events that happened in the past two, three centuries and we really are not aware of uh, the contributors to development of all our ideas. So, with this we come to a end of the study of the combinatorial techniques that Pingala started, but he started really a, a host of problems. Now, wherever once you have said the prastara, nashta, uddhishta, these have become, whenever you have a list of things, immediately the question is can I give a rule by which all these can be put in some order. And then, once I have put them in some order, what place each of them holds, can I do nashta, can I do uddhishta. This is now a very, very common problem in today's computer science also. It is called uh, permutation generation, combina uh, combination generation, everywhere, whatever generation involves, you have what is called ranking, unranking. So, that is nashta and uddhishta. So, that sort of the virus that the Pingala started has infected uh, entire history of combinatorics. And uh, it is everywhere this question appears, and, and in each place it gives rise to some very, very interesting mathematical properties. Here you saw the entire binary arithmetic coming out of the theory of prastara of Varnavrittas or the syllabic meters, and it is a very interesting topic. And that Pingala just started, and this will be seen later in prosody, other aspects of prosody, in music, it is seen in uh, medicine, it is seen in astrology, it is seen in architecture. In several subjects. We will discuss some of them in later lectures. Thank you very much. It is late, but you can have a few questions. Yes. Sir, the purpose of using that mirror transformation, ah. you, you know, isn't it a bit redundant because it is just a matter of how you convert yes, the yes. 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 Absolutely. You are very right. Uh, we are now doing the place value ankanam vamato gatihi. The lowest thing is place value 0, this is place value 1, this pla uh, place value 2. So, this is 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2. So, with this place value notation, this will be the. So, just to make it uh, consonant with the binary numbers as we know today, I am doing that mirror transformation. Otherwise, for Pingala, that is not needed. He is doing everything this way only. Yoga type of Yoga, yes ma'am. Adva Yoga is the amount of space required by the entire prastara. So, the prastara is 2 to the power n. So, there is an estimate of what space that should, because these were written on the ground. 
So, that is why this Adva Yoga that the entire prastara is written on the ground. So, how much space really you need whether it can be written in inside your house or not or inside your compound. Uh, so, a certain estimate is made of the space between two rows and in terms of some purushas this can be given. Pingala I do not think has a sutra on Adva Yoga to my understanding, but the commentators have explained it, but there is no great mathematical result that uh, comes out of it. So, it is not an interesting satyaya. Yeah. Uh, Abhignana Shakuntalam this thing you show. Ah. You show that right? Yes, yes, yes. Vahati that comes, no? Oh, it is wrong, is it? No, 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 I am not saying. I did not understand. Oh, you want uh, that, that you should ask Ram Subramanian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, it must be what is this thing, you know. I I got a confusion. Ha Ya Susti. Ya is G Sru is G T this thing, okay? Okay, then uh Sastu Radhya. Then Vahati correct, right? Ah, Vahati is LLL. Ah, yes. Okay. Then V is L correct, right? Ah, D then is D, 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 why is D G? Because ah. what uh, D is small. D is also L. D is also Vahati, V, D, who? No, Vahati is, you know, so Vahati is LLL, ah. right? No, 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 not that way. This is, I have written it in terms of Gana here. Uh, in, in the, the next first one, is in ah. Yasusti, you know, not Gana, before ah. that. Ah. You see, Ya is G, ah. Sru is G, Ya Srishti is G, 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 G correct, okay. Srashtura is G, L, G, ah. Dhyavaha is G, L, L, Dhyavaha is G, L, L, Tividhi is L, 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 Kutam Ya is L, G, G, Habir Ya is L, G, G, Chahotri is L, G, G. Okay, I am confused with you now. So, while reading it, you say, first go, come the, in the second half, when you read it as 7, 7, you read G G G G L G G Yas Rishti Rashtu Radhya. Next you read L L L L L L six L and G. Bahati Vidhi Hutam Ya. Then you see G L G G L G G Ya Habir Ya Chahotri. Bahati Vidhi Hutam has a guru only in the end. The second seven of Sraddhara is six lagus followed by one guru. That is the. Uh, 